So the next result we want to talk about is the approximation theorem for alternating series. Now, the theorem is a bit of a mouthful, but uh, the idea is pretty simple. Okay? The idea is that you can actually approximate an alternating series pretty well by any of its partial sums, right? So remember that to, to satisfy the hypotheses of the alternating series test, the terms in this sequence, they have to be positive, they have to be decreasing, and they have to go to zero in the limit, right? So these numbers are getting smaller and smaller, they're getting closer and closer to zero, okay? Um, because you're alternating in sign as you add them, we talked about in the very first video for this section, we said, well, you know, what, what happens is, you know, you kind of have, you know, maybe somewhere here is like the actual limit of your sequence, right? And so you kind of put the first term in, and so maybe, maybe like zero is over here, right? So maybe here is zero. And you add, you add A1, and you get to here. And then you subtract A2, right? And so then you subtract off A2, and well, A2 has to be smaller than A1, so it doesn't get you all the way back to zero. Maybe it gets you to there, right? And so maybe we'll, we'll kind of think about it like this way. We'll just sort of think about the difference from L. So A2 gets you to here, right? There's A1 plus, or A1, sorry, minus A2, right? And then you add on A3. You add A3 on to here. Um, and because A3 is smaller than A2, it's not going to get you all the way back to A1. It's going to get you maybe to here, right? Okay, so here will be A1 minus A2 plus A3. And then you subtract off A4. And A4, well, it can't take you back that far because it's smaller than A3 was. So maybe it gets you to say here, right? So then you're kind of over here. And there's, there's A1 minus A2 plus A3 minus A4. And now you add on A5, and it can't take you all the way back to there, so maybe A5 gets you to there, right? Um, and so on. So let's call this, maybe to simplify, that should be now S5, right? The fifth partial sum, right? And then S6 might be here. S7 might be, might be there, right? So you get closer and closer to L every, at every step, right? Uh, and you just jump back and forth over the limit every time. And so it's, it's because of this jumping back and forth, right? You're never straying too far from the, it's not like you're trying to work your way up to the limit. You're jumping back and forth over the limit. And every time the jumps get smaller, right? So that means the, the difference between the partial sum that you have here and the limit, right? Well, it's always got to be less than the next term because then when you add the next term, it takes you to the other side of the limit, right? It takes you past the limit, past the limit. So the difference between the limit and the partial sum, right? The limit of this, so the actual series, right? The infinite series, the difference between them, it's always less than the next term in the sequence. So that's a really useful result. That means if you you know, if you want to approximate a series, because calculating the actual sum of an infinite series is, in general, very difficult, right? I mean, there's lots of them where we don't even know what the value is. Um, but we can figure out what it is approximately, because it's easy to calculate the next term in the, in the sequence, right? If we have a formula for the sequence, we can calculate the next term, figure out how big it is. And what that sort of lets us do is say, hey, this gives us sort of a bound on the error Right? And that means if, we, if it's good enough to know the sum of the series accurate to, let's say, three decimal places, well, we just have to keep going until these numbers are small enough, right? Once they're less than, you know, 1 over 5,000, then we know we've got the answer accurate to, to five decimal places, right? And in fact, we can, we can always just kind of look at the two partial sums, consecutive partial sums, the limit's always in between them, right? So you just kind of look at consecutive partial sums until the interval between them is small enough and you know that you've got the, you know, the error that you want. Right? So that's the idea. We'll look at a couple of examples and then we'll move on. We'll talk about 
absolute convergence after this.